It is night time and very cold. A small group of men wearing the dark green jackets of riflemen go through a ditch, then scramble up the battered walls of a fortress towards the waiting French. Ahead of them are the guns and bayonets of the enemy, behind them the guns and bayonets of their comrades, but still they go forward. The sound of gunfire peppers the air, mingled with the cries of wounded men. The French stab and slash at them, and the riflemen fight back, every inch of ground paid for in blood and sweat. Everywhere there is smoke and confusion, explosions, fires, the stink of battle. As men fall, others take their place, and still they go forward. It looks great on screen, but on set you can't see more than two metres ahead of you half the time, says Lyndon Davies, alias Rifleman Perkins. At night, the horses literally come out of the darkness at you. You hear their hooves before you see them. There's mud flying everywhere and you get this surge of adrenaline. You really feel that you're there. I've just been reading from a book that's been on my shelves for a couple of decades now, Sharp's Victory, The Story of a Hero's Triumph, by Rachel Murrell, published back in 1996. I thought it'd be a fun introduction to our Sharps Company episode, which does indeed have our heroes up to their necks in it, notably at the Siege of Badahoth. Fought between the 16th of March and the 6th of April in 1812, the Anglo-Portuguese army besieged Badahoth in Spain and forced the surrender of the French garrison there. The siege was one of the bloodiest in the Napoleonic Wars, with some 4,800 Allied soldiers killed or wounded in just a few short hours while storming the breaches as the siege came to an end. Enraged at the number of casualties suffered in seizing the city, troops broke into houses and stores, consuming tons of alcohol and basically going on a complete rampage, even threatening their own officers and ignoring commands to desist. Several officers were even killed. It took three days before the men were brought back into order. When order was restored, an estimated 200 to 300 civilians had also been killed or injured. And that's the setting of today's story, so without any further preamble, let's get into Sharp's Company. This is the first of three TV movies that were made as the second season, for want of a better term, of Sharp Adventures, airing in 1994 in the UK, along with Sharp's Enemy and Sharp's Honour, which are the two stories I'll be covering here in the months ahead. Broadly speaking, the three main story strands of Sharp's Company are 1. Reinforcements have come from England for the South Essex Regiment, and Sharp is told he can either keep his captain's rank, so hard-earned in the previous story, and move on to another posting, or stay in the South Essex but be bumped back to Lieutenant. 2. One of the reinforcements is Sergeant Obadiah Hakeswill, played by Pete Postlethwaite, an absolutely evil man who Sharp has history with. Hakeswell reinforces this in various ways, such as attempting to rape Teresa, the Spanish guerrilla Sharp has been in a relationship with since meeting her back in Sharp's rifles, and he also gets Sergeant Harper flogged for a crime he didn't commit. The guy is bad news, and is clearly unhinged to boot. 3. There's an upcoming siege on the town of Badahoth, and not only does Sharp want to get in there at the head of the army to protect the child Teresa has given birth to, who's now living inside Badahoth with Teresa's family, but by leading the attack in what's known as a forlorn hope, Sharp believes he should be able to wrestle back his captaincy and keep it for good this time. And yes, before you say it, I know it's a stretch that the man who won a French Eagle in the previous episode to stop his captaincy being taken away by powerful types in London is in now exactly the same position one story later. Sure, he has the option of keeping his rank if he leaves the South Essex, but the guy's become a legend in the army and is even known back in England at this stage, so it's like the whole point of the previous story has just been forgotten. And frankly, the craziest part of this is, putting on my screenwriter's hat for a moment here, the captaincy thing's not even needed as Sharp's motivation to get into Badahoth quickly at the climax of the story. That could come entirely through just wanting to ensure the safety of the child he's had with Teresa, but has never met. I guess for viewers at the time, there'd been a year since the previous story, so many could have forgotten the finer details of what had gone on, and new viewers wouldn't have seen it at all, so there you go. Now, all of this said, 
I've always still really enjoyed this episode, primarily for the interaction between Sean Bean and Pete Postlethwaite. I mentioned the Hakesville character being evil earlier, and he really is. He's one of those people who get around doing truly awful things, but have enough people hoodwinked, particularly officers who see him as the ultimate order-obeying, do-anything sergeant, that he never gets caught for his crimes and misdemeanours. Well, until he meets up again with Sharp, I guess. In the book by Rachel Murrell that I mentioned earlier, Postlethwaite talks about acting with Bean and says, quote, Sharp and Obadiah are two sides of the same coin. They're from similar backgrounds, they both drag themselves up from the gutter, but while Sharp fights for justice and law, Hakes will robs, rapes, and murders. In Postlethwaite's view, it was his long-standing friendship with Sean, dating back to the days when they were in the RSC together, which enabled them to both convey such mutual hatred. It was only because we knew and loved each other that we had enough trust to be so horrible to each other, Postlethwaite said. Hakeswill is exactly the kind of adversary you want for someone like Sharp, and I can totally understand Postlethwaite's comment that they're two sides of the same coin, essentially. Particularly when you read the books, and I know I don't comment on the books a whole lot in these videos, but when you do, you get a bit more insight into Sharp's character, and the sense that Sharp is more than capable of being extremely tough and brutal, and if he was mentally deranged, or perhaps had something tip him over the edge, he could be just like Hakeswill. I know it's challenging to think of our hero like that, but I think it's perfectly true, and this story is probably our first real sense of that, of what a parallel universe Sharp would be like, if I can put it that way. Now that's probably a good stopping point for this month's episode before we get into real spoiler territory, so over to you. Have you seen Sharp's Company? Have you read the novel? Are you interested in seeing it now after watching this video? Why not let me know below in the comments?